Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and a couple of weeks ago I put out a video called Tape Mache, um, kind of exploring the idea of using tape instead of paper mache for temporary projects, something that you're just doing for fun, it's not something you want to keep forever, you just want to do something that's really fast. And I based the idea on this video, uh, I'll put a link to it down below too, a lady in a school situation was using something called a wet and stick tape. It was a very specific brand that she was using and she was putting it over balloons and creating um, masks for kids. I couldn't find the wet and stick tape that she was using and I mentioned that in my video. Instead, I had bought this, um, this is actually a medical supply, it's called Next Care. It wasn't expensive, I just played with it with my bird masks and it, I, I really liked it. But when I mentioned that I couldn't find the other tape, a lot of people went out searching for it and were able to find it in all kinds of different places. Um, I, I couldn't find it, but a whole lot of other people did. And it turns out that the tape that the lady was using in that video is really expensive. You have to buy all 10 um, colors and it, the, the set costs somewhere between $60 and $110 depending on where you found it. So we're not going to use that. But people uh, kept looking for something that we could use as an alternative and we found this wet and stick tape instead. This is a packing tape but it doesn't have those fiberglass lines in it like the packing tape that I already had here in the house. So it looked like basically it's the same thing as what the lady was using in her video but we would have to paint it ourselves because it's brown. It didn't have a color on it. But that's okay, right? So I decided that now would be a really good time to go ahead and play with it. Um, again, it, it would only be used for something temporary. We, no kind of tape is going to substitute really for real paper mache. Real paper mache will last for many years if you keep it dry. Tape isn't really intended to last that long. That's really not what it's for. So this would be just for a temporary stuff where you want to make something really fast. Um, if it works. So let's go ahead and find out. I, I actually have been working on something else. I, I started a grizzly bear mask. Really happy with the way it's coming out, but I'm, I just needed a break. <laughs> so we're going to play with some tape today. So let's, let's see uh, how this works. So here's the tape and I thought that it would be possible to do what we do for regular paper strips and paste and that is just to tear it so that you don't have those edges. But that doesn't turn out to be true. You can't you can't get more than just a little <laughs> itty bit off of a time. And I don't know if you have more patience than I do, but that's that's not going to happen. Um, but there is really thin paper, so that I don't think that's going to be a big deal. The other thing, though, is that if you tear it this way, that works. But you're ending up like even right here, the very first one I pull out. I don't know if you can see this or not. There's going to be this area right here where the, the paper actually splits. The, the stickum is on this one and it's not right here on this edge. There's no, well, no paste right here. There's nothing. So that's going to be a problem too. I don't think we're going to be able to tear this tape. I think that the lady in that video was cutting hers into strips to put on her balloon and I think that's what we're going to have to do because tearing it, it's just didn't appear to be an option. You are going to get those those edges showing, but if you're but if you're working with kids and balloons and stuff, I don't think that's going to make any difference. When I was playing around with this tape, uh, obviously it already has the stick -em on it. It's just like regular tape, and so you don't have to get it wet. This kind you do, and that was what and that's what makes it feel so much like regular paper mache. But there are some problems with that. And the first one is that um, wet paper mache, I mean, this is, this is true of any kind of paper mache, not just tape, is that you don't want to get it very wet because if you put it on flat cardboard, it just when water is on one side of a piece of cardboard, it's going to make changes to the cardboard shape. It just happens. So if you just put this in, in the water, kind of like we do when we're dipping paper strips into paste. I know we're not supposed to dip it, but I always do. And then we put that on there and we put a whole bunch of them on. It's way too wet. We're not only getting the, the stick on wet, which has to have water. We're getting the paper wet too, as you can see. And if I covered this whole thing with uh, these wet strips, which I, I actually did 
when I was first playing around with them. And it just, the, um, the cardboard works. It has to. So I'm not going to wait for that because you, you can imagine, <laughs> you know that happens, right? So we're going to put this away and we're going to do something else. I put this in water and I wrung it out as good as I possibly could. So it's very lightly wet. And now I can take my tape and just do this to it and lay it down. And if you do it that way, you can actually put it on flat cardboard if you want to and it won't warp your cardboard. And that, I don't think that would be hard for kids to do. The one problem that you might have is that the part where you got your finger on it, and that corner doesn't have any water on it, so that's not probably gonna stick so good. See, it's gonna, it's standing up. I'm gonna have to get that wet. So you have to be careful of that. Hard to get it wet, there we go. The lady in the video was putting her tape over a balloon, and I don't have any, there's no store in town that sells balloons. So, I'm gonna go make a fake balloon. Okay, put some plastic wrap on this bowl. And the only reason I wanna do that is because I wanna see how many layers of this tape you would have to add in order to create a hollow, unsupported thing and have the tape hold it up. Because that's what the lady in the other video is doing. Whoops, it doesn't stick. A little bit. Oh, you have to get it wetter. Look at that. Huh. Okay. Maybe you do have to dip it. Well, yeah, it's not it's not sticky enough to stick to the plastic. Okay, I'll bring back my my water. Now this is paper, it's not whatever that next care was made out of. The next care is flexible and paper isn't. So if you have any um, details of any kind, like you would on a regular sculpture, then um, it's not going to be easy to get around them. You're gonna have to uh, cut up a whole bunch of really little pieces to go around all the the details, like on your noses and whatnot. If I was making real paper mache with um, regular paper, I would tear it right there so that it would lay down flat. And in fact, I've got a whole video on how to do that. And this stuff, it's, it's not easy to do. It's a little easier to tear when it's wet like that, so that helps, but so now we've got one layer on there. Well, maybe now we don't have to get it so wet because it's got the other wet on it. Let's see. see if I can use the... Okay, now it's working a little bit better. Just using the sponge. Okay, it disappeared for a second <laughs> because the furnace came on. Um, one thing is too loud to make a video when the furnace is on, but the other one is I wanted to get this dried up so we can see what happens with it. First thing I'm noticing is that it is wrinkling up on the edges. If you covered an entire balloon with it, that probably wouldn't happen. Probably this is sticking up because I was holding on to that corner and it didn't get any water. It's dried bumpy. <laughs> so let's take it off of here and, and see how strong it is. Now this is just two layers. I was I was too lazy to do any more than that. Let's let's see. And it's still just slightly uh, damp on the inside. So this isn't entirely fair, but I think I think two layers would be enough. If a, if a kid was patient enough to cover a whole balloon with this, with two layers of the tape, I think actually it would work. And, and, and that's strong enough, even though it is slightly wet still on the inside. You can, you can see where it's, you know, it's holding up. You could paint it. Now, so many people helped me find this tape. I really, really wanted to be <laughs> very excited about it. I mean, it was so nice of everybody to just chip in and spend their time searching all over for the, for the kind of tape that the lady used in her other video. And I'm, I'm 
not as excited as I wanted to be. I'm having a really hard time thinking of a reason why an adult artist, anyone over 13, would want to use this even for a temporary mask instead of paper strips and paste. It isn't easier to put on as far as I can tell. Uh, because you can't really tear it because of the because you leave edges that don't have any stick them on it. Um, it. It was harder to put on actually even if you get the right amount of water and everything which I kind of played around with and didn't do that right at the beginning. But even if you get all that right it's hard to get it on smooth enough especially if you have if you're putting it around something that has any kind of detail around it, noses eyes anything any kind of sculpture it just it would be a lot harder actually than wor working with torn up newspaper and paste um, it's less messy because you have water getting on stuff instead of paste so that's a plus if you're working with kids and if you want them to make a, a mask over a balloon like that lady did in the other video this would be a good way to do it this is much more flexible so you wouldn't be able to make a, a mask with just this and nothing behind it like like the lady was doing with her balloons but you, you can do it with this one I'm, I, I showed you that we can actually use two layers of this tape and come up with a just a temporary mask that a kid would have a lot of fun with and uh, they could paint it and, and it would actually work so for that purpose I think this this paper mache alternative <laughs> would work. I can't think of any other practical use for it. I seriously can't. I don't I don't know. This stuff on the other hand, um, I covered the bird masks with it. They held up really well when I was uh, putting the feathers and everything else on them. I was handling those uh, really. I'm going to let me go get one. I just wanted to show you that um, the back of this one I, I didn't have a chance, I didn't have enough of, of the Next Care tape so that I couldn't completely cover the back of this one. So there's edges. And even though I was handling this a lot, um, putting all the glue and the, and the feathers and all that kind of stuff on it, there's, this tape is still just as solidly stuck on as it was when I first started, which really surprises me, but it's true. And it, that was like two weeks ago. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm not going to use any kind of tape for a permanent sculpture. But if I was going to cover a temporary mask with it, I would use the Next Care instead of the Wet and Stick. Like I said, the only the only reason I can think of using this this tape is for kids. I'm not knocking it as tape. I'm just saying as as tape mache. I'm <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> But I, I really had fun uh, playing with it and trying to find out if it would work or not. I really appreciate everybody who helped out after that last video and went out and searched for it. That was just so cool. Now I do have another experiment coming up. I got to finish my bear first. But a lot of people have been asking me if I have a recipe for a clay that can be used without anything underneath it. Kind of like a modeling clay or an air dry clay that doesn't need to be put on as a thin layer over an armature like the air, like the um, paper mache clay or the air dry clay recipe that's on my website. They want to use it um, by itself, like just in a, in a big glob, like you would if you were playing with real pottery clay. I don't have a recipe <laughs> that can be used that way, but I did order some air dry clay, uh, a commercial product that has some fairly good reviews, and I just want to play with it and see what we can really do with it. That's coming up. The bear is going to come first. I'll hopefully get that video out next week, and then after that I get to play with my brand new air dry clay <laughs> that I ordered. It's already here. It's on my shelf and I haven't gotten to even open the package yet. So I'm really looking forward to that. So watch for those two videos. And then in the meantime, go make something <laughs> and come visit me. UltimatePaperMache.com. I'll see you there.